Good morning and happy Sabbath. Thank you, choir. <laughs> We're so blessed to he be here this Sabbath day in the Christmas season. And I'm so excited to ask you to join us in singing. And go ahead and stand. This is an enthusiastic version of Joy to the World. So join us with enthusiasm. <laughs> you and we want to bless uh, you know the Lord is going to bless us with a happy Sabbath and we have a special program uh, today planned and so we uh, are excited about that we love bringing in the Christmas singing uh, season and focusing on the birth of Jesus Christ not only in a manger but ladies and gentlemen in our hearts as well amen amen so we do have a few announcements um, Sergio there's a slide right after this um, Pastor Kevin and I wanted to say thank you because you were generous enough, church family, uh, as a pastor appreciation gift to send us to a Michael W. Smith, Amy Grant concert, which was wonderful. And so we just wanted to say thank you. That's right. Come on. I'm sorry. This is it. There we go. All right. I love it. And I, I'm more of a silhouette there, but it's okay. Here we go. <laughs> it's all good. Um, so we're very, very thankful and grateful, and uh, we are excited, and so we hope that you enjoy the program. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us what? Rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Uh, we will have our, our tithing offer. Amen, church family. Uh, as clearly stated by Pastor Chris, uh, this is a season of giving. This is a season of remembering. This is a season of thanksgiving and a season of praise and worship. As you continue to continue in praising and worship our Lord and Savior, remember all the blessings he has bestowed on you in your giving this morning. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much for being a God who can deliver. We thank you so much for blessing each and every one of us during this season and all year long. Bless us now as we continue in thy service and give as, as you have blessed us. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's now time for our children's story. All right, kids, look around. Everybody, if, you ha if we have kids, I hope we have kids. There's kids, right? Oh, awesome. Now I see them. Okay, kids, come on up and go ahead and sit up here on the, um, on the steps and on the risers. Do we have a basket? Oh, here they are. Okay, kids, let's come over this direction.
wonderful. Oh, you guys look so wonderful today. Happy Sabbath. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, before I do the children's story, I just wanted to let you guys know, not only the kids, but also parents, um, that we actually have um, four additional um, tickets to the... Um, I'm squeaking. We have four additional tickets to the skating rink in um, Arlington. So if you'd like to join the adventurers tomorrow for skating from 10 a.m. to noon, yes, tomorrow from 10 a.m. to noon, you can go either see uh, Pastor Kevin or Kim, and they'll be able to give you the tickets. Okay, so now on to the story. I have a question for you guys. Can anybody tell me what is the special holiday that is coming up? Oh, okay, you had your hand up really fast. Christmas. Christmas, that is right. Okay, so now I want you to raise your hands again. I'm gonna ask you another question. So the next, but don't raise your hands until I ask the question. Okay, <laughs> okay. So you are ready, I know you are. Okay, so the next question is, okay, Christmas is the holiday. Now, what are some ways that we celebrate Christmas? Oh, your hand up was up really fast. What's your name? Evan. Okay. Uh, and indifferent present for poor people. That's awesome, yes. Okay, what's your name? David. Say it louder. Um, what's your answer? Okay, that's fine. You can think about it again. I put you on the spot. You can um, give presents to um, your family and spend time with them. Wonderful. Okay, so one way we celebrate Christmas is presents to friends and family and others who don't have. And to uh, to give money to um, to buy stuff for other people that don't have things. And if you can't do that, then give them money. Wonderful, okay. To celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Very good, okay, and let's see. I, okay, so let me ask you, okay. So I know that the choir, actually you see the choir? I know that the choir has an idea of one thing that we can do to celebrate Christmas. And you see them, all of them, all of them have their hands raised. Okay, so I need a volunteer. I need one, oh, okay, oh, you did not do anything yet. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is stand up, and can you please choose one of the choir members to tell us what is something that we do to celebrate Christmas? Go ahead, pick one person from the choir. <laughs> oh, there's choir people back here, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I can't believe she picked me. <laughs> Ring the bells. Okay, so this is Miro Hernandez, and I'm gonna ask Miro if he could please just give us another example Thank you very much. Okay, so we happen to have bells here today and Miro did a wonderful job of giving us an example of those bells. So let me ask you this. Can you tell me why we, th why we think Jesus' birth is so important that we choose to ring bells? Does anybody, can anybody tell me why Jesus' birth is important so we ring bells? Okay, I think you had your hand up first so I'm gonna ask you. Because it's, because it's, it kind of tells people that it's kind of like, it's Christmas. Okay, very good. Because he's our savior. Because he's our savior, so he's important. And so when we have something important, do we want to make a big proclamation that something important is happening? All right. Okay, so you know, what I want to let you know is that Christmas is the time when we're thinking about Jesus and that he was coming into this world. And as we go through this, um, the, today the choir is going to be singing and we're actually going to hear from Miro with bells. And so as we go through the Christmas program today, I just want you to listen throughout the entire program for the bells. Can you do that for me today? 
Okay, now I have one more question. I need one more volunteer who would like to pray for us today. Oh, you just put your hand up so fast. Can you come down here? Wonderful. Okay, let's bow our heads. What's your name? Emma. Emma, would you pray for us today? Dear Jesus, thank you for this day where we can worship you and learn more about you and do and worship you. And thank you for all these people who come to worship you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Emma. Okay, kids, you can go back to your seats.
For thousands of years, I have delivered God's messages to earth. At times when he speaks, it is personal and intimate. Other times, his voice is mighty and strong. At all times, it is to be heard by everyone who chooses to accept and change. And each time God speaks, his words are exact, true, and perfect. When the maker of heaven and earth takes the moment to speak, it is more wonderful and more beautiful than any being could possibly imagine. It is with this joy that I proudly proclaim his messages. Over time, he chooses to speak to a specific group of people. Israel, yes, Israel is one of his beloved people and the storyteller of his plan unfolding on earth. In this nation, there was once lived a little girl named Mary. This message God intended for her was one of astounding significance, not only for her, but for everyone for all eternity. This message I brought to Mary sparked messages for shepherds, for wise men, and for people who lived for centuries after her and thereafter her. This message is the message that heralds every other message I've ever delivered. And the message is God wearing the flesh of humanity as a child born to save the world. Now rejoice all ye people, for the love of God is greater than anything that we in heaven or you on earth can ever tell.
God didn't spare his son and with him he can give to us not only the things we need but the things that we desire in our hearts perhaps all of us have a petition this morning and we want to ask the Lord to make this petition come through in our lives I'm going to ask those of you and all of you if you have a petition in your heart this morning to kneel down where you are and we are going to ask God in heaven to honor this desire that we brought to his house this morning <laughs> our dear father in heaven we humbly come before your presence in this day of rejoicing we know this is the day that you have made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. We know, Father, that you have a plan for each one of our lives, and that is to restore your image so that we can one day come and see you face to face once again as our first parents used to do. Father, we ask that we might be humble enough to allow you into our lives every day, every moment, so that our thoughts, our desires, the words we speak, the things we choose to see, the things we choose to do in our lives can be refined by the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that you might make permanent residence as we review the, the story of the baby Jesus coming to take our form and taking our place on Calvary and shedding his blood for us. As we review this beautiful love story, then we might be willing, Father, to love you back by obeying you. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So, Father, this morning we ask that our hearts and our minds can be totally surrendered to you. Please bless the beautiful program that has been presented, that will be presented this, this morning. And we ask that your Holy Spirit be with us. As we leave this place, we'll be filled with your Spirit and with this desire to live for you. All these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Magi, Daniel, the wisest of all of us wise men, would be praising God tonight 
His words are echoing among us past an awestruck whispers, excited cries, and even earnest tears. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. So long, so diligently, we have searched the sky, looking, <coughs> wondering, debating, technical difficulties, until there it is in the West, the star prophesied of more than 500 years ago. Preparations are even now underway. Massive plans were set in motion years ago, ages ago. The gifts have been gathered so long ago in anticipation of this event that I've actually had to dust off the three gifts. How glad we are tonight that all the supplies we have have been set aside and replenished over the centuries. We are so close to what we have watched for in the heavens for so long. Tomorrow at sundown, we will go. The heavens will guide us more clearly than any map ever has. We will follow the star wherever it leads us. We who have waited so long will wait still as we have so far to go. But at the end of this journey lies the most precious of all treasures, the hope of all mankind, the one whose birth was prophesied. Tonight, the king is born. Son of God, our hope, our grace. 
Mother of the Messiah. So often as little girls, my friends and I played this game. Who will she be? And then there was my father, every once in a while reminding us that we are descendants of the royal line of David. Imagine, our little hovel, home of the mother of the Messiah. And then there was Joseph, calling me his princess and teasing that we both can trace our ancestors back to King David. Marry me, Princess Mary, and we will live royally as carpenter and wife, the happiest, poorest royalty of Nazareth. And then the angel came, and what was a game among children and the hope of a nation was suddenly incredibly, wonderfully, shockingly real. The angel's words, don't be afraid, but your life is about to be drastically changed. Blessed are you among all mothers, but unmarried and with child? Both the inconceivable blessing of the soon coming of the Messiah not just to our people, but into my arms, and the terrifying truth of being an unwed mother. And, oh, Joseph, how he tried to be kind when I gave him the message. Looking back, I can see God was giving him an opportunity to prove his character, and he did. And now, here in the stable, so far from home, with my new precious son in my arms, and filled with the incredible joy and yet so many questions. Why would God allow his son to come into the world in the company of cows and donkeys, but fill the night sky with the light of thousands of angels announcing his birth? How is his purpose served? By making shepherds the messengers to tell what has happened here in Bethlehem. So many questions, but I know he is the answer. I have only to look into the face of this tiny king to know that he is our light shining in the darkness. He has come to set us free from the shadows, for he is the promised king.
The most incredible thing happened to me while I was exiled on the small island of Patmos. Jesus transported me in a vision to heaven, and, and I saw the very throne of God. And the one who sat on it, he was like a radiant jasper, a, a carnelian stone. And completely surrounding the throne was a rainbow like I'd never seen. It was emerald, it was gorgeous, it was awe-inspiring. Around the throne were 24 elders. I, I counted each one. And, and from the throne came flashes of lightning and, and loud thunder. And, and before the throne was something like a, like a sea of glass, like crystal. In the middle of the throne were these four living creatures who had eyes in the, in the front and, and in the back. And, and they just, they never stopped saying, holy, holy Holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. And as those four living creatures were singing, I, I noticed the elders, they were, they were laying their, their crowns before the throne, and they were bowing down before him to, to praise him, to honor the one who had created all things. And then I saw something in the hands of the one who was seated on the throne. It was a scroll, and it was writing on the outside and, and on the inside. And on the scroll, I, I saw seven seals. It was, it was the sign of perfection. It was, it was amazing. See, living in the empire, I knew something about seals on scrolls. Seals were there to make sure that no unofficial person could read this document that was meant for only the most important of people. In fact, a, a scroll in the empire would have one seal for, for Caesar. It would have a, another seal for the Senate. It would have a third seal for a general of, of an army and a fourth seal for a governor of a province. But this scroll had seven seals. Surely this must have been an important message, probably the most important message ever, but, but who could open it? And then I heard it. An angel announced that no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was worthy to open the scroll or, or even to look at it, let alone make its events come to pass. And so I wept because no one was worthy to open this message that was meant for us to hear. Then one of the elders came over to me and he said, Stop crying. The lion from the tribe of Judah, he's been victorious. So he can open the scroll. And, and then I saw him again, the one who was seated on the throne, but now he, he was like a slaughtered lamb standing next to the throne. It, it was he that, that John the Baptist had proclaimed the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. It's he who is the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lamb and the Lion. It was Jesus. The elders then took up these stringed instruments and, and bowls filled with the sweetest of incense. And as the incense rose, I, I heard the words of the prayers and they were rising to the throne, and they sang about the redemption of Jesus that he had provided to every people of all the earth. And as they sang, I looked and saw thousands and thousands of people of every color, shape, and size singing with a loud voice. Oh, as long as I live, I will picture the saints in heaven singing those praises. What an amazing sight it was. What an incredible sound it was to hear. And yet there was more to behold. As I, as I watched, I saw heaven opened. And Jesus riding out of heaven on a white horse and, and the saints of heaven riding with him. And on Jesus' robe it said, King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, friends, he is coming to bring us home with him. So, children of the king, be not faint of heart. Rise up and rejoice, for you belong to the king of kings. And the king has come, 
and he will come again. I hope that your heart has been touched. And I hope you're thinking right now about the testimony that you have in this moment, being reminded of who we are and why we are who we are. This is my favorite song at the end of any Christmas service because I feel like why, why is it that we have this tradition of revisiting the birth of Christ? And when you think of the birth of Christ, you automatically go to the death of Christ, and then what that means, that he's coming back again. And I can't help but, like, I avoid the news at all costs, but still it just comes to me. And the world is losing it. They're losing the Lord. And you can tell everywhere you look. So I hope today you've been kind of renewed in, like, who you are. You are Christ's. We are all sons and daughters of the Lord. And... We're not done. He's not done with us, and we have a mission. We are to go and share our testimony with everyone we can because time is short. Please stand and join us in singing these words with all your heart. Go tell it on the mountain. celebrate you may be seated where we celebrate and remember what Christ did for each of us by leaving the glory of heaven and coming into our world he wasn't a part of this but he came into this for you and me because he loves us 
I know that all of us have many different traditions that we have in our families uh, this time of year, but I want to encourage you, if it's not a tradition in your home, make it a tradition because Christmas is all about Jesus. We love the gifts, but the greatest gift is the one God gave us when he sent Jesus to this place. And so as we celebrate this time of year and love each other as we do, just remember it's about Jesus. We are so blessed to have had um, this incredible worship. Were you blessed today? Do you want to keep singing? I do, too. It's incredible. I just want to thank so much the sound guys, um, the lighting, everybody who had a hand in making this happen. Thank you. Thank you to the choir. You guys were amazing. We had some special guests here singing with us. I know Mr. Connor Smith is here, and yes, and Ashley Green, she had to run out, I think. She, she was here with us. And I don't know, were there other guests here? Tra I thought so, Travis. I thought so. So we just want to thank you for being here with us today. What a blessing it was. But most of all, we, we want to thank Connie. And I know, Connie, you don't like this. I know how you can keep singing, Pastor. Join church choir. Amen. Amen. We want to thank you, Connie, because th something like this doesn't happen by accident. It takes a lot of work, planning, and preparation. And so we just want to thank you. And I know that she loves and appreciates every single one of you for being involved. And I think if you, if you want to be in choir, is there an opportunity for folks to do so? I'll come. I'll come. So thank you so much. Let's have a benediction. Let's have a prayer. Connie, thank you so much for all that you do for us. Let's have a prayer. And let's keep the songs in our heart, shall we? because Jesus is coming again. Heavenly Father, we give you glory. We give you praise today. As we remember, reflect, as we sing, as we praise, as we worship you, that, that and from before the foundation of the world, you had a plan in place, and it meant coming into our world to deliver us from what we did. And so we praise you. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for being victorious on Calvary. And may we leave this place telling it from the mountain, singing with our heart all the glories you deserve. And in the process, may someone hear that and want to get to know you better, Jesus. In your name we pray. And all God's people said, amen, amen. As we exit the church today, I just want to invite anybody, if you'd like to come forward, if there's anything on your heart for prayer, uh, something that you'd like to share. We have an altar team, and we'd like to have that time with you to take you before the, before the cross this morning.